blackness what they want blackness. we could give them what they need blackness. give them what they want blackness. we could give them what they need blackness, blackness what they want blackness. we could give them what they need blackness. give them this what they want right. we could give them what they need my bumper flat like pasta scene flat like pasta scene flat like pasta scene my waist like flat like pasta scene flat like pasta scene flat like pasta scene my bumper flat like pasta scene flat like pasta scene flat like pasta scene my waist like flat like pasta scene flat like pasta scene flat like pasta scene What's up? Welcome one and all. Welcome one and all. It's another Kako T. Kako T. Kako T. Kako T. Where are my peoples at? Where are my peeps? Okay. All right. All right. What's going on with you guys this afternoon? What's going on with you this evening? Are you quiet? Are you quiet? Let me see where you're from. Drop a flag. Drop a rag. Drop a bomb. Drop something. Let me know where you're locked in from. Good afternoon. Welcome to another Kakoti, uh, sorry about the late start. Like, listen, if I was somebody who, who only focused on the problem, we would not be starting tonight, right? But it was, a, it was a long, it was a tight start. Welcome guys, and thank you very much for your patience. We are a little late, but better late than never. Thank you very much for your patience. Yes, Dominica in the house. Drop a flag, drop your rag, let me know where you're from. We have the Sun Diva girls in the house, all the way from UK. Go, yo, it's time difference. So let me tell you, like, it's like, what time? Like, bedtime, way past bedtime. <laughs> oh, it's party time. At least it's no party because, you know, everybody has to be, like, on lockdown. Everybody's in quarantine. Everybody's uh, is all shut in. And we have the ladies from Sun Divas, like, Diva and Sunshine is joining me in just a little bit. Yes, checking in, checking in, checking in, checking in. Yes, I see the people I'm checking in. Big up yourself. Make sure you guys share the live because guess what happens? Today at the end of the show, the person who tags the most people in the show getting themselves a Kako tea mug. Just like that. Just like that. You're getting a Kako tea mug for yourself. You got to tag the most people. And I have four people monitoring my chat this afternoon. Four people this evening monitoring my chat. So you have to tag your friend, tag your, your, your boyfriend, your husband, your side man, your girlfriend, whatever it is. Tag somebody and let them know what's going on right here on Kako T. Make sure you tag them and you have to tag me too. So you got to tag them and tag me too and at the end of the show i am giving away a kako tea mug just like that it, it doesn't look just like this one but it's similar you see because this one says gl this one's for me this is mine big up to lovely things for hooking it up love the mug i, I mean like that is a that is a copper mug that's a mug you know it's like that's a big cup of tea you know when it's time you get in a cup of tea that's a real cup of tea yes big up to all my folks out there i see saint lucia in the house Barbados in the house, I see Antigua in the house, Jamaica in the house, Dominica in the house, I see people putting flames. Um, yes, big yourself up. And thank you very much for tuning in to Kako T. Of course, this show is streamed live on Playgo. So big up to Playgo. So over 30 countries around the Caribbean are locked in. They're watching us. They're watching us. And big up to all of the folks at play girl thank you very much to digicel for allowing me the platform to showcase talent to showcase uh soca music to showcase so showcase all these beautiful and talented individuals we have 
around the world. And I, you know how I love my people, right? You know how much I love my people. I'm so happy that you guys could join me here. Send Vincent in the house. Yes, my name is popping. Yes, yes, Green Queen today. Yes, <laughs> thank you very much, guys for tuning in this evening. Don't forget, the end of the show, you get a chance to win yourself a Kaku tea mug. All you gotta do is tag, tag, tag a friend, tag somebody, let somebody know that you're on the live and that you're enjoying it and that they too should come on the live with you, right? Tell them to come and make sure you remember that you have to tag me as well. So you must tag me as well so that I know that you're tagging, right? I need to also know that you're tagging. And I got people monitoring and they're gonna be letting me know at the end of the show who is the grand winner. Okay, you saw my intro video, right? You saw my intro video. People popping, dropping, locking. Sun Divas in the house, East London. Where you're at, if you're locked in from East London, let me see, let, let me see you let the flags down in the bottom. Oh boy, <laughs> I can put on my, my British accent. I'm trying, I'm trying to think, I'm trying to think. Yes, uh, Sandivas are coming up next. And I mean, they have been doing phenomenal, you know, in the UK. You know, sometimes we in this side of the world and we don't really, especially when it comes to soca music and the appreciation of music, we don't really realize or understand what's going on, on the other side of the world. So I am so happy that I can get a little a tap in to the other side of the world because these girls have been featured on BBC One Extra. They've won UK Groovy and Soka Monarch titles. I, they, I mean, they've been doing their thing. And I mean, doing their thing, right? So you want to make sure that you come on because we're going to be featuring these two beautiful ladies out of the UK. We're gonna we're gonna talk to them because you know we gonna we wanna know who they are, where they're from. And yes, yeah, somebody says I'm here for the Sun Divas. A paradise, a one paradise in the house. Yes, the folks are definitely coming through to support the Sun Divas. So we're gonna just shut up now and let the Sun Divas come on now so we can ha have a chit chat with them right here on Kako T, you want to say special, special good day. Hello. How you doing? Hi. Hey, hey, nice to have you guys. Nice to be here. Yeah. Oh my God. You guys look lovely. Thank, Thank you. you. So do you too. You. <laughs> I'm I, I feeling kind of a little bit shiny this afternoon. I don't know what, what was going on. I think I was a little flustered because things were not starting up. So I started... <laughs> I started melting right in front of, right in front of the But I am so glad that you guys can, I know. What time is it now in England? Um, uh, quarter past 10. ten. Quarter past 10. Yeah. So normally in England at quarter past 10 on a Saturday, what would you guys normally be doing? Um, <laughs> who would go first? I would be probably in somebody's party. I wouldn't, it's too early. No, <laughs> it's a lie. I mean, <laughs> mm -hmm. So about what time you start getting dressed? Like what time do you really start like ten you know, out, your outfit? About eight, nine. Eight, nine. Yeah, about nine, but ten really. Mm. <laughs> so, so when do you head out? When you say you, you're getting out, and how do you get? Like, how do you do it? Do you guys? Because you know, here we grab an Uber, we probably grab a Lyft. What would you guys do? Like, do you guys have the same things down there? Like the same Uber, the same thing, or you probably go hop on the bus? Because I remember partying in London and we took the bus. Well, we, <laughs> we drive most times. To be fair, um, back in the day, we would get on the bus sometimes with our friends. Um, but yeah, and we head out between like midnight and one a.m. on average. And what time do your clubs like shut down or your house parties shut down? So about like four or five a.m. It depends on what party you go to, but you can we can roll party for long. So. Yeah, and it depends on where the where the fet is. So if it's like in central London, sometimes those clubs shut at like two. But if it's like in ends, like just somewhere in East London or a random club somewhere, then it can shut later on like four, five. Well, what's the new normal like for you guys now with COVID and all of that? What is it? I mean, I mean, the one of the, the industries that have definitely been hit hard 
by this whole pandemic is the music industry. And that's what you guys do. So what is the new normal like for you in terms of music, in terms of, you know, partying? What, what do you guys do? We, to be fair, as sisters, we have parties all the time. We're always together. We party at home. Like, we have YouTube. Now, you know, we got, like, a lot of the fets were made virtual, especially for Trinidad Carnival and stuff. So recently, I've literally been fed into, like, Pez. He had, like, concert thing online. And then we had all the ladies, Nadi. We were fed in, right? Yeah, we were. <laughs> And on YouTube, it's actually amazing. However, I do miss a real party. So you see that first fair? <laughs> I can't wait for it. I suspect some people can't wait for the vaccine. <laughs> boy, boy, I don't know if I'm taking that. <laughs> <laughs> That's another show. That is definitely another show. I, I, I want to get to know a little bit about you ladies um, and where you guys from and and. and like what got you into the music business. And I first of all want to start with with finding out a little bit about, you know, where you grew up. And we'll probably, you know, in terms of the question, because I'm dealing with the two of you, we'll go in alphabetical order. So for answering, just answering purposes. And if you want to take a question and she probably, you can handle it, you know, we'll just go like that. Cool. So that's you, Nats. N before oh. S. <laughs> oh, um, so what was the question? Where okay, so tell me a little bit about how, where, you, how you grew, where you grew up. Okay, so we grew up and um, we were born in London. Um, our parents, uh, my our father was born in St. Vincent. Um, big up all the Vinci's that are listening in. Um, and our mother also born in London with um, her parents were born in uh, her mother, St. Lucia, and her dad, Barbados. So, like, we're a bit of a... You're a real so God. We call ourselves, like, yeah, basically, a mix-up, isn't it? A buyo. So, that's it, Dominique. But I wasn't sure if you knew the term. So, oh, God. God. <laughs> Remember, so, yeah, um, so. oh, yes. 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 Inside, mm -hmm. we, me and Sam, we grew up really close with our grandparents. Like, mm -hmm. your grandparents are always, like, your queens, right, in your family. Like, they're the ones who aspire to be like and you you know we really like grew up having our culture as being everything to us so like i see myself as, as a londoner but i also see myself as as my culture and you know what i've been shown and how i've been brought up as like a caribbean person so um yeah we were born in london we were raised in london we went to the caribbean the first island we actually touched down was st vincent when we were younger you know our dad made sure we went there so we can take the culture and learn about his home and like have some of that and be part of it and feel like at one and um from time we went to st vincent we just wanted to island hop right but we're too young. We're too young. We couldn't do that at that stage. But yeah, um, so we visited our, our islands. To be fair, St. Vincent is the main one that we've really been to um, and spent a lot of time. The one that we feel really at home in. We've spent a little bit of time at Lucia, but not much in Barbados. Um, yeah, so we went to school um, in London um, and we were always involved in like music on our dad's side of the family. His family were really like into church, so we also like grew up really a, a lot in church on like the Vincentian side. Our mm -hmm. grandma, it's really weird because people know that you know we've grown up as like Christians, but to be fair, our parents weren't really church people like that. It was mm -hmm. more our grandmother, and we used to go everywhere with our grandmother. My dad went at church, and I've always about that. But yeah, we still hold those morals really close to our heart, and we still um, use those to like rule everything we do today really um and what else sam chime in because oh, well, well thinking about thinking about like the, the fact that you guys grew up I'm, i mean it's always really nice to have grandparents around and having even your father's side of the family because you know once the parents live once these people live and they go to other places they bring their culture they bring their traditions they bring everything with them their style of cooking and everything and you guys got to to enjoy all of these things including the music yeah. But what really got you guys into music, especially soca music? Sunshine, you probably want to take that. I would say, um, like, literally music in general, we started off probably singing in church mostly and then singing in school. And then, but we always had music in our house. So, like, every Sunday, our mum would be cooking Sunday dinner 
blazing soca music, lovers rock, reggae, dance hall. So we were just infused in the culture. We used to have to like dance for our dinner if our granny came round or like yeah. if, if, if she was here, she'll be like, so yeah, and then listening to um um oh country and western Jim Reeves like our granny would be like come on dance with me and we'd have to dance with our grand like so literally I feel like not that we didn't have a choice but we were just surrounded by music entirely so um I just feel like we naturally grew a love for it and mm -hmm. then we started singing in church and in school and our dad also um got us like he made us go to like singing lessons and also he took us to the pan yards that was a, it like a crucial part of our love for the culture we went to the pan yard from early i think i did my first panorama we both did our first panorama when we were nine yeah so we've wow. Been, wow. Been, been doing panorama from we've probably been playing pan since seven and then our first panorama was when we were nine and being surrounded but in the mask camp so we'll go from pan to the mask camp and then in the mask camp they're only playing soca our mom used to go to like a soca fitness class and we'd have to sit there because it was only for adults and watch our mom just like do her fitness <laughs> stuff and we used to just we just loved it naturally <laughs> so yeah i would say that's how we grew a passion and a love for soca in particular now, before you guys got into music uh, or at least singing, you know, um, professionally, you guys were also choreographers. Like, how did how did that happen? I know you say your mom you used to go watch your mom, and how did that happen? Nancy, do you remember when mom was um, did like the Spice Girls? <laughs> cool. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. She, yeah. She, 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 she yeah. Into dance as well. She she just had vibes. You know, when someone just vibesy. I wouldn't mm -hmm. say she was a choreographer, but she was vibes. Like she brought dance into like, but she she's works in a school teacher, and she had the whole school dancing. And I don't know, we just we just had that dancing bug from early. So we later on when we were in like secondary school, we trained ballet, tap, jazz, everything, and then we also did street dance. And then we realized that actually soca music wasn't established as a dance form and one thing about when i used to go to parties and see people just whining i just felt like what we do needs more appreciation so we need to choreograph our wine and actually make it a thing so mm -hmm. then we started to make youtube videos in a time where we couldn't find soca videos online like literally there was you could count on one hand if you type soca dance or youtube one hand so we said let's do let's do it we got our girls who um MLM dancers, uh, our dance group went viral several times. So, like, I know a lot of people know MLM dancers. So, big up our girls, Kamaya and Tandy. They're from Guyana and St. Lucia. We got together. We stood on the cold London streets and we recorded videos to different, um, in line with different islands, Independence Day. So, we didn't care rain, snow, sleet. We didn't care what the weather was. We would freeze, possibly catch pneumonia to record this soca dance video and post yeah. it on people to enjoy on independence and that's how our journey kind of and sunshine was our choreographer she's okay, amazing sunshine. <laughs> yeah i think part of the reason and the passion for doing it as well was that we danced all our lives we did like competitions when we were in school and then we saw how huge afro beats got from dance like i felt like when the azonto came out I feel like that took Afrobeats to the next level. Loads of people were dancing online to Afrobeats and I really felt like that helped the music to go from being underground to now being a very mainstream um, genre of music. And I wanted the same thing to happen. I was like, why can't we do that with Soka? Like if everyone just dances to Soka songs, then it, it, people, it will catch on and then maybe it will help Soka to get more numbers, more people to listen to it. And I feel like it's it's definitely growing. Um, we haven't reached the mainstream status yet, but we're, we're having an impact all over. What exactly, what exactly do you consider mainstream, though? Because you guys are super popular in the UK. Oh, so I mean, like, like I mean, like the genre of soca music. Um, okay. Being like recognized as a mainstream genre, i.e., like it having its own category on Spotify. Okay. I, mean, I got it. I got yeah, it. So that was the aim. Like we wanted to use dance as a vehicle to mm -hmm. like help soca to be recognized more 
that is fantastic and you guys are definitely influencers where the youtube videos are guys you should go check out their videos <laughs> yes go check out their dance videos um those dropping i mean what you saw in their music video was just like a tip of the iceberg it was it wasn't even like it wasn't even a, a, a half an inch of what they're capable of so they're real bad dancers you know and um i, I just wanted to to find out when you guys would travel to to at least to the western part of the world like come come to the caribbean did, did you guys ever go to the states but or is it just mostly the caribbean nah so i'll let you have that one because it's interesting so, um yeah it's an interesting story so um i did my degree in well one year of my degree in new york and um so i went back to my school actually when i left and we performed at my school um mm -hmm. it was actually amazing and that's like our only, that was our only time ever performing in New York till, to, till this day, right? But we did perform and it was amazing. We went for like the Caribbean student organizations, um, like festival, and it was amazing. They actually booked us and paid, paid for us to come over there. Like they treated us like real artists. It was amazing. Um, and that was earlier on in our career. So we did come to America. We also did like a small radio tour so we went to like all the radio stations in like New York, New York, pick up them. Was it Frankie P? When a Frankie mm -hmm. P DJ Smooth. So we went around and we did like our colonized tour there. And it was really good actually, but we haven't spent lots of time in New York and it's definitely like a market that we need to like tap. Yeah. Into. And we also linked up with Julian's promo, like Shout yeah, Julian. Nice. That and Viva, yeah, they interviewed us. It was that. It was really, it was really nice the um, support we got because it, it was really early on in our career. So we really and that's what I was, I was about to ask you. How did you feel? You know, do you did you feel accepted? You know, like because you know, like you we, we're on the west, right? And we feel like everything is kind of for us. But there are people who are, especially when you're from the Caribbean, and they've gone all over the place. And everybody has their own little cliques and all their little communities that they form. And it's like the exact, like if you have to think about it, it's the exact same thing. Like even the names you use for things are the exact same names we use. You know, in North America, this like you talk, you talk fat, you talk, you know, you say <laughs> mass camp, you know, it's the same terms. Yeah. You guys. So how did you find in terms of a receipt? How do you find people received you when you when you came to the caribbean for example um as people who you know coming from the uk with the same um caribbean heritage but how did you uh, get it feel accepted in the caribbean you could take that girl <laughs> <laughs> i feel like i feel like it's it's mixed and it depends on who you stumble across i think mm -hmm. on average um if you just have a conversation with someone or someone hears about us, oh, there's these two girls from London, they're singing soca, blah, blah, blah. People are like, they're more skeptical. But as soon as we touched the stage in St. Vincent, it was a wrap. Like people were messaging me from London saying, my friends in St. Vincent, they just sent me this video of you on stage. Like literally that was happening to us. So I feel like we just, our, our stage presence is like, that's one thing that we really love because you know, like we love to dance as well. So we really bring all of that energy, positive vibe, our sister bond, like we bring that on stage. And I feel like once people see us perform, they're like, oh yeah, you're the real deal. I remember a story like, our um, man, the person who was managing us, he had asked someone to like do an article on us in the newspaper, like really look out for us when like we come to St. Vincent. And his friend just did it because it was his friend. But then mm -hmm. at the Soka Monarch semi-finals, we performed and the guy came up to us and was like, oh my gosh, like, <laughs> your manager told me about you. I was like, okay, and I did the article because, you know, that's my boy, but he's are the real deal. And I want to like really interview you and get to know you guys more and help you. So I just feel like once people saw us perform, like the skepticism diluted. Um, mm -hmm. I, I, wanna, I wanna touch a little bit on the sisters, sisterhood kind, the sister, the sisterly vibe. I'm very tight with my sisters. I, you know, I have three sisters and they're actually on the live, you know, like they're posting, they're like talking, they're they're on the big up to my sisters, Jarell and Corel. So big up to them. You guys have this sisterly bond. Do you guys ever fight? And how does that that does that affect your your music, your performance. Imagine right before a fight, you can't find your eyeliner. 
and she probably steal your eyeliner and you're wondering, but where is my eyeliner? Oh, I only find in one eyelash. It's all, I see your manager laughing, so I suspect something's <laughs> coming. <laughs> I feel like you've been in our room somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> Like, I can't lie to you, JL, and I'm going to take this one because I feel like I'm the hardest to deal with. Sunshine is very sunshine. She's What it says on the bag, that is what she is. But me, I'm a little bit diva, and I, I can't help. It's not on purpose, but when I feel pre a little bit of pressure for any reason, I can't function. So sometimes I'm like, I'm not down on stage until I have some water, because I'm or I'm hungry. I can't do this. I can't record. I can't. And she's like, can you just suck it up? And I'm like, no. <laughs> so we do have, we have issues. And usually she's the one saying that I took her mascara, her mm -hmm. lash, her eyeliner. It's usually mm -hmm. her telling that I took it. So I you know, reorganized and I put everything back in the same place. So when mm -hmm. I go back to the place and it's not there, I know it wasn't me because I, <laughs> I know where I put my stuff. And all the time, yeah, she'll be like, Oh, uh, she'll go to the car and it's like under the under her seat in the car. That's where she would have left the makeup under the seat, and we'd be debating for it for about half an hour. I'd be like, just check the car. There it would be under the seat. So, so you do have your little rivalry. Of course, it, it, it happens. It happens to us all. Trust me. The day before my sister's wedding, that's a whole nother story. That was probably the last time we had like a really big, big fight. That's a whole nother story. Oh, wow. Well, we kissed and we made up. That's we it. Up. We yeah. kiss and we make up. And we actually have a way, we make up really quick. Like we make up within seconds. Seconds. Like we 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 always need to ask each other a question anyway. So it'd be like, all right, I'm really angry with her, but I need to know if she's done that thing. <laughs> so we have to What's the age difference between the two of you? Two years? Four and a bit. Two years. You so you're pretty close. You are pretty close. Yeah. yeah. All right. Well, let's let's get into slackness because I mean we, we gotta talk about the, you've had quite a few songs. I mean you had your two flag uh, make away which won you both um, uh, UK groovy and soca monarch, but you came up with this new song called Slack, and I mean we just speak about all these empowerment and sisterhood and all of these you know good stuff. And Slack tends to be somewhat of a negative stereotype when people some people might use it to promote female promiscuity how are you guys looking at it from your perspective what is your perspective on your song slack and why did you name the single slack and the video to come with it this is actually a two i would say this is a twofold question because firstly we co-wrote it with trini boy gc shout out our bro trini boy um and i think in the scene people typically know us for being quite modest like not overly sexy and like not overly like we we do sexy but like really you know like tamed and i feel like people were always telling us that like, we need more yeah, sexy. <laughs> we need we need more from you so. and i feel like when we did that um co-writing session that studio session with trini boy i feel like slightly he wanted to just like take us out of our box a bit so mm -hmm. i feel like that's part of how that song developed mm -hmm. and then the second half now you could take that no, you don't want to. I would say that no, because I don't know. Putting a positive spin on the term slack. Oh, okay, yeah. So, yeah, typically I don't think people think of slack and think of sun divas because we try to, even when we're dancing, like there's a way that we do things and we try to keep it tasteful. And even though we still try to know that dance is a, a, a skill that should be, you know, and especially soca dancing is something that we really want to see come up. There's just a way that we do our thing, not meaning that any other way isn't like right or nice, but there's a way that we do our thing. And I feel like using the word slack is such a word that we we would never use that I thought it would be quite cool to like stir it up a bit. So the word, I just thought, okay, why not? I mean, it might connect new people to us. It might it might um some people just listen to like hear the word and then watch the video and just think we mean oh ladies be slack and then mm -hmm. the spin if you actually listen to the words we're not actually telling 
females to be slack. We're saying our bumper is slack like plasticine and in Trinidad, if, if something is slack, it's loose. And our mm -hmm. bumper is what we have a wire waist. Yeah, we're wine. Right, we're celebrating the wine, we're celebrating the movement, we're celebrating the culture, we're celebrating females in general. So we try to touch on different elements of that in the song whilst mm -hmm. keeping it fun, whilst keeping it light. It's COVID, guys. That's like keep it, you know? Um, mm -hmm. and yeah, just a, a song that girls can really have fun to. And the guys like what the girls like. So <laughs> I think it's a win-win. How was how it, it recording during the pandemic? Oh, <laughs> we've had so many studio sessions that we've had to like cancel because we'll book a, we'll book a studio session, then the COVID rules will change, and then or someone close to us might get sick, and then we don't feel comfortable going out, or like there've been so many like hurdles and setbacks. We do have a setup at home which we can use um, to like do rough demos and stuff. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, like we've just been doing the most that we can given the circumstances. Um, and we've been working on quite a few interesting tracks that we think people- I was, I was about to ask you, what, what's next? What's next? What's next? So we, we've been working on quite a lot of music and for us, um, Soka is like our, if I had to think of what music was like the closest to, to me, my heart, my being, who I am, like the one that I feel my ancestors through is soca. Um, but we're also trying to keep elements of that and like experiment with other types of styles of music that we also love and other type, types of music that have also impacted us. So um, you will hear some new music that might have a different feel for us, mm -hmm. but hopefully we still get that Sundiva vibe. Because mm -hmm. we're a vibe, we're an energy, and yeah, I you you might be. I think Sunshine said this in interviews that people might be a bit shocked when they hear like some of our other stuff. Mm -hmm. I don't think shocked. They'll just be like, "Oh, this is different," or whatever. Yeah. But it's still vibe. Yeah. We just be working on lots of music. We just want to get lots of new music out there um, for our supporters to, to hear and vibe to. You. Yeah. And I'm gonna go to the chat because people have been talking and people have been commenting. Uh, I want to start off with officially flexitarian TM bad dancers. Listen, goals. <laughs> <laughs> this is something that uh, knows you guys and follows you guys. You. Um, uh, somebody else is saying, "Hey, my gorgeous young women, love you so much, Auntie." So your auntie is on the line, thinking you hey, guys. Yes. I definitely have you. Your Somebody says here, Vincent John is saying, uh, Sun Diva, well done. And uh, Sam and Nads for a live chat link up. Soka is the thing from Calypso. <laughs> I guess. Shout out Vincent, because um, you know, the the Calypso tent here is called a CASA, which is the Association of Calypso and Soka Artists. And we're a part of a CASA. So the one of the groovy Soka Monarch competitions that we won is actually held under the Calypso tent. So that is one like essential piece of the carnival season. That is like the, the, the amount of legends that have passed through the Calypso tent, like a lot of the people who helped to like found Notting Hill Carnival, the pioneers who have helped to keep Carnival Alive in the UK and Calypso and the culture like have really worked well with Acasa and like helped to help young people like us to be able to appreciate our culture but also interact with our elders so we love it we love everything about the tent yeah my sister says your hair is popping oh, <laughs> Guys, it, it, what's next? What's next next for you? What can we see? Because, you know, summer's coming and there's a chance, you know, COVID might say bye-bye. A chance. We're hopeful. Fingers and toes crossed. Right? What's next for the Sandivas? So I'm going to say my little bit because I know Sam's going to say something else. So I'm going <laughs> to say what I'm going to say. So um, we want to release the EP this year because we've never released a body of work all at once. There's been a lot of singles from us over the years. So we really want to achieve an EP so people can like really get used to our sound and we can just get feedback and see what songs and styles like people like from us. So I'm so looking forward to releasing that project and it is coming this year. Factually, it's coming. It's coming. And, coming. Sam, and 
And I was just going to say, Nad's handed it over to me because she thinks I'm super passionate about this part. And I say it in like every interview, but I really, really want us to do a concert. And I know Nad wants us to do a concert as well. It's just about, like, we have a standard that we want to upkeep. We want it to be good. We want people to really enjoy it. So we just want to be able to make sure we can do it the right way. And we do have a team of amazing women who are helping us to achieve all of these goals. So shout out to the team. So hopefully we'll have a concert. It might be like quite small this year. We want to make it a yearly thing, embed it in the calendar for Notting Hill Carnival. Um, it might be virtual. It might be a live event. We have to see what the restrictions say, but hopefully some sort of performance production from the yeah. Sunweavers. Well, we'll definitely be looking out. Uh, let the folks know where they can find you so if people are trying to, to connect. I'll type while you talk and then I'll put it up on the screen so people can see and let people know how they can connect with you, where they can follow you, um, your social media handles. I guess, uh, Nads, you want to do it or Sunshine? Which, who wants to do it? I don't mind. Okay, go ahead. If I'm going to it out, Sunshine always jumps in, so it's fine. So uh, you can find all our music on um, at, at Sunday. Oh, okay, it's not. See, I got it wrong already. This is why I let, leave it to Sunshine. All our music is on. Um, at, you can find it if you type in Sundivas or Sunshine and Nadiva because we used to be called Sunshine and Nadiva on all the streaming platforms. So please check both because we have music on both. So that's Sunshine and Nadiva and Sundivas. And our apps are at Sundiva on everything um, except for Twitter. On Twitter, we are the Sundivas. All righty, ladies, it was so awesome having you guys hang out here with me. I enjoyed every single moment of it. I want to encourage folks to go out there and check it, follow them on YouTube, follow their music, and not just their music, their dance stuff. Let me tell you, they live it. Eh? You're welcome. <laughs> Like, thank, you. And thank you very much for coming uh, coming out and, and stopping and talking with me on faculty any special folks you want to shout out any last big ups i see your manager looking she's taking notes uh, it's a special <laughs> problem <laughs> We want to shout out our team. So we have a management team, three ladies who help us. Shout out to the whole team. We want to shout out the Sunday fam because when we tell you to um, roll out, you to roll out. Like a lot of you are here with us on this live. So yeah. shout out to the whole Sunday fam. Thank you for continuing to ride with us and supporting us. We love you. And yeah, I for think one my sister that stuck in your and she lives in England. So just make sure the doors are locked. Um, also, can we shout out DJ Steven? He's a real yes. So, yeah, um, and JL, because you're beautiful and we love you. <laughs> you're such a great presenter. You're amazing. Thank, Thank you for having you. us. Thank you for coming on with me. I truly appreciate it. Thanks for reaching out and, and connecting and connecting it with, with Steven. Uh, big up yeah. to DSM management and making it happen. Thank you very much, guys. Love you both. Love you. Love you too. Bye-bye. See you.